Hi, and welcome to the third section of the introduction. This is on work-life balance. So Zig Ziglar was a very successful motivational speaker over a period of nearly 30 years. He frequently opened his seminar with the topic success. The first story he told was about a former boss who he considered to be very successful. Zig wrote down seven topics on the board that added up to success. He felt his boss was successful because he was wealthy, he owned a large successful business, a beautiful home and yacht, and traveled all over the world. Well, Zig was at a party one night and someone was talking about his boss. They were not altogether complimentary. Zig said that he realized his boss was not as successful as he had imagined, and here is why. His health was failing. He had a serious ulcer and had had one, and had had one small heart attack. His wife and family had left him years ago from overworking and not giving them enough attention. He treated his staff very poorly and had very few good working or personal relationships. Despite all of the wealth and material goods and the traditional trappings of success, he was not a very happy man. The real key to success is balance. A young, ambitious salesperson was concerned about his lofty aspirations in sales and in his life. And he asked his experienced mentor what his thoughts were on this driving ambition that he felt most of the time. His answer was, it's all right to be ambitious as long as you keep the balance. Well, that doesn't sound like very exciting advice, does it? It is important to keep the end in mind and always weigh the consequences of your lifestyle choices. The fellow's boss in the story above was clearly not successful because he didn't pay attention to the balance. The reason we bring this point up is that it is so easy to get carried away with our daily tasks and forget what is important. In Western society, we value what we have and what we do. Our success is defined by these parameters and we use them to define our own identity. The truth is success is who you become. Are you a happy, satisfied, healthy, energetic, loving, efficient, reliable, respectful person? Or are you becoming something else? See page 15. In the work-life balance section of this program, you will be able to identify how well you are keeping the balance and create action plans to focus on the areas you need to work on. You probably know them already. It is important for you to identify or define your own success because, it is, because it's very personal. You only know what you want in your life and how it will feel when you achieve it. Happiness is not about living a different life, someone else's life that you envy or wishing you own this or that or traveled here or there. It is about living your life differently. So while this may sound very minuscule and unimportant to you, you only have one life, one moment at a time to live it. And what are you going to do with that? Let's look at the comp components of your life and see where you are now, according to your definition. Write down what your de definition of success is for, for you in each of these areas. Fitness, family life, partner, socializing, rest and relaxation, self-actualization, spirituality, self-time, community, hobbies and interests, work and career, personal development, financial success, mental and emotional health. Complete your definitions before moving on to the next page. The definitions of these items are very personal and there aren't any right or wrong answers either. Fitness, for instance, may be a daily walking program, going to fitness classes three times a week, or running a full marathon, depending on who you are and what your abilities are. If you saw the movie Mrs. Doubtfire, it ended with the definition of families not always looking like a traditional family, that there are many types of people or friends that make up a family. Financial success could be defined as paying off your biggest credit card to paying off your mortgage or saving for a vacation. See page 16. As you move into the next exercise, 
Stop to think about what the definition is of each of these areas of your life. Then on the wheel, consider the center is zero and at the ends of the spokes, there are 10. And put a dot on the spoke where you believe you are in these areas today. One being low, five being halfway and 10 being high. In each area, describe why you entered the score you did on the wheel. It is important to capture this as your baseline for the rest of the program. Now connect the dots. What do you think the ideal object would look like? Well, it would be all of the dots at the end of the spokes looking like a perfect circle, right? Usually we find people have objects that look more like stars or an egg. So which is better, a star or a perfect circle that is only halfway around? While we might think the star is better because you will at least have some success in some areas of your life, the halfway circle is better because it indicates balance. What dimension do you want to focus on that will have the greatest impact on the others? Why? What are you doing or not doing to cause this dimension to be where it is? What is your action plan to change it? How will you measure your progress? How often? How will you know you are successful? What will be different? How will this impact your other dimensions? On page 17. On this page, transfer your scores from the balance wheel for each dimension. Then beside that, write down why you gave yourself that score. On page 18, choose the dimension you feel you would make the biggest difference to your work-life balance if you were to improve the score. It may not be your lowest score. It may be a dimension that is very important to you and you wish to focus on improving it. Completing this page will provide you with some clarity and direction as to your action steps. I choose this dimension to work on. Here is my action plan. My measurement for achieving this is, and I will track this by. The successful outcome I expect is, and this will impact the balance in my life by. In this introduction, we have looked at the many success cycles that are constantly going on and how to move ahead in any one of them. We have looked at your basic needs and whether they are being met to eliminate chaos in your life. And lastly, your work-life balance or lack of that is causing you to feel stressed and anxious. Take some time over the next week to think about all of these items and gain some clarity about what area of your life you really need to focus on first. That will make the biggest difference to you moving forward and what you think you need to do. In the next session, we will discuss gratitude, which will begin you on your journey to inner peace and happiness and why. You will also learn the self-empowerment technique that I referred to in the introduction that has been life-changing for other participants. You will be able to instantly make changes to situations in your life and begin to reduce your stress. Meanwhile, I encourage you to look over this section and take some time to really think about the items in your success cycle, your Maslow's hierarchy, and your work-life balance. Hopefully, working through these ex exercises will provide you with insights as to how you are currently living your life and a vision of how you would like to be living your life. It might be helpful to discuss these items with someone close to you that you trust. Remember, not someone else's life, but yours. Here's what John Lennon had to say about happiness. When I was five years old, my mother had always told me that happiness was the key to life. When I went to school, they asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. I wrote down happy. They told me I didn't understand the assignment, and I told them, they didn't understand life. In session one on page 20, there is a self-reflection page that you can fill out after you've completed these exercises. The questions are, my two important accomplishments are ideas I, or behaviors that I have implemented. Here's what I have done differently and the impact it had. An area to focus on that will make a difference and other comments or ideas I wish to emphasize or work on. Just before we leave from today's session, 
there is one concept you need to practice during the program each day for 10 minutes. At the beginning of the program, on page two of your playbook, I refer to you going about your year in a calm, confident manner and living a life of inner peace and serenity, independent of circumstance. While the content, concepts, and techniques I am going to show you in this program all work very well, the mindfulness meditation is the piece that just brings it all together and will get you to your new lifestyle much faster and easier. You will begin to experience your life differently in a very short time. All I'm asking you to do is go along with it for now. And in session three on universal energy, I will explain how it works and why it is so important. I suggest you take 10 minutes when you first wake up or 10 minutes when each day when you go to bed to get started. Here is all you need to do. It is simple, but not easy. <laughs> first, anyway, see how well you do. First, sit or lay comfortably in a quiet spot. Close your eyes and rest your hands. Breathe normally, but, but fully through your stomach, not your chest. Each time you breathe out, pause and count and then breathe in. Count one and then two and then three. Each time you breathe out up until 10 and then 10 to one each time you breathe out and keep repeating for 10 minutes. A couple of things will happen. First, the 10 minutes will go by in a flash. Also, you will find that your mind will want to wander and just keep talking to you. Just let the thoughts come into your head, then imagine those words floating away on a cloud instead of engaging with them. Just let them go. Focus on your outward breath again and continue your counting. Just for fun, you can make yourself start all over again from one every time you lose focus, but you don't have to. See how high you can count without interruption. And as you get higher up in the numbers, you will see that you are improving. You can even do this when you are sitting in a doctor's office or on a bus or a train while commuting or anywhere you can sit comfortably. The more often you do it, even for a few minutes, the better you will be able to focus and your results will come much quicker. Just turn the sound off, leave your phone in your pocket and try this a few times a day. Thanks very much and you have a good one.